Welcome back, builders. Going to take you on a quick rip around town as we discuss one aspect of EVs that actually benefits gas motorized bikes. As a gas enthusiast, our small niche might at first begin to ignore any advancements made in electric bikes, but this is a booming market that's only growing and is not going away. But this is good news for us because it means we can keep our eye on certain improvements that might work their way over into our small gas bike category. For simple reasons that when you have a motorized vehicle, you can focus more on comfort and heavy duty reliability than you need on human powered practicality. Just a few small things I've been keeping my eye on are heavier duty rims, spokes, wheel hubs, suspension seat posts that focus heavily on comfort, different style seats, and handlebar setups, just to name a few. So even my hardcore gas enthusiasts should try to keep an eye on advancements in the EV market to see what they can migrate over into our small hobby. One of those items we're actually looking at today, the ex Nito old school lineup. Now I guess this is technically a review, but really it's just to give them feedback. Exnito approached this a little different than most companies who contact me as they specifically asked for my feedback. So far nobody has done that. And uh, of course I'm going to make a video about it, so there's that. To be completely transparent and so that nobody gets the wrong idea, I really don't know much about helmets. I've never given it much of a second thought. you think I would, having ridden bikes for so many years but I don't. I either grab a bike helmet when I'm just going to be cruising around at low speeds or a DOT when I'm going to be pushing the limits. More often than not, I'm cruising around at low speeds even when I'm going on my adventure rides, which is probably what a lot of you are doing as well. And it just so happens that this helmet's rating sits nicely at my average cruising speed whether I'm just going to work or I'm going on a long distance adventure. Exnito rates their helmets using a Dutch standard. It's the NTA-8776. I am looking at a cue card to remember that one because it's going to take a little while to catch on for me. But they're rated to withstand impacts at 28 miles an hour or 45 kilometers an hour. Your average bicycle helmet is going to be rated at about 15 miles an hour and a downhill or BMX helmet would be 20 miles an hour. To comply with the NTA standards, it gives you a lot more coverage at the base of the skull and a little bit more coverage above the ears next to the temples. More protection is always good as long as the helmet stays comfortable because you're not going to want to wear an uncomfortable helmet. Now on paper, having more coverage is good for obvious reasons, but in a crash when the helmet might shift slightly due to unpredictable situations, that extra coverage will keep certain areas of your head protected that might have otherwise been exposed. Styling is of course subjective, but I opted to go with the Valkyrie. The Goal or the Logan would have been my second picks, but in hindsight, after seeing a few other videos from different reviewers, the High Viz White is what I actually would have gone for had I given it a bit more thought. I've seen a few night shots in low light conditions of this helmet being worn, and by God is it high vis. This white almost glows, and it also gives you a canvas to customize it any way you want. So keep that in mind when choosing options. The helmet features generous adjustability in multiple contact points. It's a one size fits most more on that in a little bit, and it has a front and rear rechargeable light that is waterproof so you can happily ride through a thunderstorm. I love my thunderstorms. Most of us realize that helmets are an investment. They're not something you plan on purchasing every couple of months or even years, and you're expected to replace them really only if they're uncomfortable, unpractical, or you get into a crash that damages them. Exnito seems to understand this as their helmets come with a free lifetime accident replacement. If you damage your helmet in an accident, they'll replace it for free. This helps justify the high price tag of this helmet. Well, high is subjective, but in my opinion, $150 is a bit high for a helmet. Now, there is a discount code in the description which you can use to bring the price down to $135. Either way, their helmets come with free shipping. And just take a moment to understand that very few companies offer accident replacement on their helmets. So this is a big bonus because it means assuming that this helmet is comfortable and practical, it's essentially the last helmet you'll need to buy. 
at least for the majority of motorized bike riders who aren't pushing excessive speeds all the time. I didn't notice any fine print on their website or in the manual that comes with the helmet about their free crash replacement policy, so I assume it's pretty straightforward. But this does give us a good opportunity to see if Xneedo is after our community feedback or just more exposure. They have a YouTube channel and should be able to respond to this question in the comments. If they do, I'll pin the comment. It might take them a few weeks to get to it, so if you don't see it right away, don't assume the worst. Xneedo, my question to you is, does the free crash replacement policy cover the helmet just once or multiple times? I'm not going to really be disappointed with the answer, as I assume it would be just once. I'm really just curious to see if you're actually watching the video for our feedback. Now, having already established that I'm not an expert on helmets, let's move on to what little feedback I can offer. As a fun side effect of giving feedback about a helmet, you get to enjoy the wonderful view of staring at my goofy face for a little bit. I'm sure the Discord server is going to have fun with the emojis on this one. Although this view actually comes with a benefit for the viewer and a worst case scenario for Xneedo, as I've been blessed with large floppy ears and I wear glasses. That combination means that any extra coverage of the helmet around the ears can lead to discomfort, something I was concerned about when I first examined this helmet. Thankfully for me, they had goofy-eared individuals in mind when designing this helmet's adjustability, as there is an adjustment on the back strap that allows you to lift the support tabs so they don't dig into your earlobes. Thank you for this. If you've ever worn a helmet or a mask that pinches the top of your ears for an extended period of time, you know how frustrating and uncomfortable that is. And this is something that for me is an absolute must to be considered practical. Because as we mentioned earlier, if it's uncomfortable, you're not going to enjoy wearing it and you might omit it. Now I've never been fortunate enough to wear a personalized fitted helmet, so I might not know what I'm missing, but as far as I can tell they did a good job at making this customizable to your head. I don't feel any issues when I'm riding this helmet, and I've taken it on some adventure ride. I've been using it for two weeks going back and forth to work, and riding over some rough conditions. When adjusted correctly, as far as I can tell, the adjustments do not migrate and the helmet stays in place. Even when you're going over rough conditions, it doesn't bounce around or slide to impede your vision, which is rather important in my opinion. As somebody who rides at night quite often and in the early morning hours, I really do like the rechargeable light on the helmet. It has a 10 hour run time, recharges in 3 hours, it's very practical for my situation. The fact that it's waterproof is a big bonus because, well, if they're not, then that's just a useless gimmick in my opinion. But these are be seen lights. You won't be using the headlight to see where you're going. However, in my opinion, they're plenty bright for what they're designed to do. It's actually probably a good thing that the headlight is a dispersion light. If you've ever tried to use a headlamp as kind of an emergency, let's just get home bike light, you may notice that street signs reflect and blind you as you're coming up into intersections. And this doesn't reflect the street signs nearly bright enough to even notice. But it does cause them to be reflective and be seen. So it's the best of both worlds. And as an added bonus, when you get home in the dark and you need to unlock your door and put your bike up, it gives off just enough light to see what you're doing. The tail light has three settings, on, flash, and fade. I use the fade, and I appreciate that the headlight stays solid no matter what setting the tail light is in. I've never cared much for flashing front lights. I've found them to be distracting, so they thought this one through. Now, thank you for this. But on the back side, I do like having a flashing light of some sort because for motorists, that's kind of the universal signal that the light they're seeing is a bicyclist. And when you add a high mounted light along with the bike light, it makes it a little more obvious that that's someone on a bike. I was a little concerned at first that the placement of the rear light on the helmet was a little too high for short motorists to see, especially if you're riding on something with an aggressive forward leaning stance like a mountain bike or a road bike. So I ran a test, I got my girl, she's pretty short, 
she held the camera at her eye level as I rode past her a few times and I'm on the Hemingway Cruiser which has a slight forward leaning stance and according to her she had no issues seeing the light on the helmet after reviewing the footage to me it looks just as easy to see as the light on the bike itself so it looks like they thought this one through and if you're riding on a cruiser with an upright stance you'll probably have even better results I do however have three complaints about this lighting system that I would change. They all have to do with the charging port. Number one, the silicone cap is small and hard to open. You really have to dig at it if you have big fingers. Two, it's a USB micro. I would have really liked to seen a USB-C. It's just so much more common and for anybody with an Android phone they're probably going to be carrying one with them already. And lastly, the space for plugging the charger in is too small. Uh, most of my cords barely reach the contacts to charge the helmet. So far, they do, but they barely contact, and over time, I see this being an issue. So I would like to make this cap easier to open. I'd like to make the space wider so it's easier to fit a plug in there and less likely to bend or break it off of the port if it gets yanked. And I would like to see a USB-C charger instead. Now it's summertime, so let's talk about cooling. And it's been over 100 degrees every day for the past week, so I had a good chance to test this out. Clever design on the vents in this helmet. Because once you get above 20 miles an hour, you get a nice breeze flowing through those vents. It's a big bonus over this as opposed to a motorcycle helmet, which are designed to be at higher speeds before they give you any noticeable ventilation. As far as I can tell, the ventilation on the foam padding does a good job too at keeping the breeze flowing around your head. As when I take this helmet off on hot days, I don't notice a pool of sweat running down my face. With all the adjustment, the good padding, and the extra protection, they've managed to do a really good job of keeping the weight down. I assumed it was going to be a lightweight helmet because it's designed for comfort and protection, but it was a lot lighter than I thought. You pick this up and you don't even notice the difference between a standard bicycle helmet as far as the weight's concerned. Now, on that note, I've been so used to using my heavy DOT helmet on the faster bikes for so long that I'm not used to being able to whip my head around so quickly from side to side. It makes me more willing to do it, gives me better visibility, and lets me double check my shoulders more often. It does come with a visor. I'm impartial to this. I did test it out. I found that I had to consciously remember that it was there to use it in the afternoon, but when I did remember it was there and I tilted my head down a little bit, it works. It blocks the sun. It's a lot like the ball cap style bills. It's uh, more of a cloth material. It's not plastic or anything. And they did put some thought into this, at least on mine. It forces itself to flip up and it has resistance, so when you're riding at higher speeds, it's not going to flap down into your face and block your vision. That would obviously be terrible. So they didn't just stick it on there as a gimmick. They actually put some thought into it, which I can appreciate. It's probably more for styling than anything else. Um, you know, if you like it, use it. If not, get rid of it. But it doesn't seem to block my vision when I'm not using it, uh, for what it's worth. So I'll sum up my thoughts. I feel like it's a premium helmet. It does seem to justify the price. Picking it up because of the weight, you wouldn't think that at first, but after examining it and using it for a couple of weeks, it felt like they definitely put some thought into this design and didn't just come up with a generic idea or a copycat. The free crash replacement policy is probably the biggest thing they have going for them, in my opinion, coupling that with the fact that it seems like a great helmet. It's comfortable to ride with. I don't even notice it's on my head. Even when I was riding around to make the review for this video, I could at times forget why I was recording, <laughs> just other than to ride the bike. The added peace of mind knowing this helmet was designed for the average speeds that I ride my bikes at is really going to help me feel more comfortable about sketchy situations. And it keeps my head as cool as a helmet can for well, the current riding conditions of 100 degree temperatures. So I'll be riding with it throughout the rest of the summer and on into the winter, see how it does in cold environments. Other than the charging port being an inconvenience, a bit older tech, and slightly out of spec for the price point of this helmet, I have nothing else to complain about. 
lastly, this isn't really a complaint, just an option I would like to see on the website. It'd be nice to have one of the helmets with a front, back, and side reflective coating. If the logistics of doing that are a bit complicated, then a secondary option I would like to see is uh, reflective customized stickers that are resilient to the elements. Other than receiving the helmet itself, I've received no compensation for this video. And these are my own honest opinions. I hope you guys got some useful information out of today's video, or at the very least, were mildly entertained. And until next time, ride safe.